I've been asked to welcome your school to these lands. I do so gladly and with the spirit of reconciliation. I wish the school, its teachers and students well. I am sure Great Southern Grammar in welcoming you and you never to forget that the lands occupied by your land like the whole of the Southwest and the Great Southern. Thank you for the purpose of education. But it remains in our land and will always be in our land. Whatever use is made of it is the spirit of my people. Welcome to these lands. May your school enjoy success and prosperity so long so so long as it occupies them. Thank you very much. We started right back at the very, very beginning when I think the idea of creating an um, an independent another independent school in Albany was just first um, being thought of that would would have been back in 1996. Um, we were looking for the um, um, upper school for my daughter, who uh, would have been entering year 11 and 12 um, for the school. But, um, and that's how we sort of got involved in those very, very early days. And we uh, went to a meeting at the Dog Rock Motel where the ideas were looking for parents with um, uh, the option of having private school. And uh, then we went to the meeting at the town hall. And from there, it all just blossomed into Arthur becoming very involved um, with Stephen Lee and, and Annette Knight and uh, Peter Pratton and John Gilmore, who we had already actually had known from Perth. We knew John and his family up in Perth when we lived up there. So, um, and I suppose uh, the other um, thing here was that Arthur had been involved, being a builder, Arthur had been involved in schools throughout his bu building life as a, mm. as a builder. And so there was another challenge for him to be involved in a new school that would have new opportunities to grow. And we were both um, very keen on the idea of the um, ethos of the school being Christian based. That was, that was important to us. And then the idea of the school of the sea, um, because Albany was by the sea. There were so many opportunities. And so that's how we originally got involved. And then it just grew from there to um, a little um, card table at the show in 1996, handing out a leaflets, um, getting people interested. And yeah, that was mixed feelings at that time. But by the time we got into 1997, we had a much more structure of people um, interested and involved, and we had an office um, which Sally was sort of um, running. And Stephen uh, Lee was very good at delegating people to um, on side to do things. And Arthur became involved in the different committees, the building committee. And then um, he also the PNF, um, and so uh, we gradually saw the the buying of the land or the purchasing of the land um, out at um, the on the present site. Um, but of course, that then um, that was an only an airstrip with a little. Um, yeah. It was very interesting. It was to go, lots of rabbits running across the paddocks. Um, we. Then, of course, um, once they had a, the... And, of course, the other thing we were involved in is the uniforms, um, what uniforms they would be wearing and so forth. So it was... And fundraising. Oh, my goodness. There were lots of little fundraisers. There were raffles. There were dinners we organised. There were all sorts of things, all to raise money. Um, we had our wish lists of... Um, which was, you know, a can, um, ever never ending list of mm. basic essential mm. things that you need to start a, a school with. But it all came together and we had our 39 students to start. We would have loved to have started on the um, present site, 
um, but of course there was no buildings at that stage or buildings weren't completed. So we, um, our first year was at Mount Melville, so that was fun. We had to clean up the old site. It was parents, well, all parents were involved oh. in that and we were cleaning and scrubbing and painting and and the children were involved as well. So, so we had year to eight to year 10 in those first years. And they were a close-knit group, mm. um, a mixed bunch, um, but they all, uh, we had a, a fantastic year and was very close with the teachers, close with the parents, so, but it was a really, um, it was wonderful to see um, the school mm. and to be involved in those early days. And yes, there was a lot of hard work, you know, mm. in, um, in, in all that we did and supporting our students, um, our own children, um, because it's a small school, meeting new people, new challenges, um, limited um, facilities and all that sort of thing. But we made up for it mm. in, in being, um, I think, close together and supporting each other. So then, of course, um, and I do remember the very, very first Foundation Day on the current school site, which was... Um, that was very, very special. That was in June and the sun shone and we had a, um, we got a special, to, um, we had a special sort of stage set up. It was on the hill and we put some hay, ba hay bales up to, um, so that everybody could sort of stand up and um, those that were addressing the group were noticeable. Um, and it was a fun day and the, billy, the <coughs> kettle was boiling and there was lots of homemade cakes and goodies um, and that was a really um, memorable cool. day, that yeah. first foundation mm -hmm. day. And then of course from there we went in from um, 1999 to 2000 and of course Narell being one of the foundation students um, she went from her year 10 to year 11 and then in 2001 she was the, the year 12 student and she was captain of Macari which she's very proud of. She was a rower, um, she was a swimmer, um, she liked to be involved in long distance running. Um, so Narell was out there, you mm. know, and they were a great group. And by that stage, the numbers had grown in the school. And of course, they were the foundation graduation students, mm. which was very memorable as well um, for them. And that was, of course, held at the old Esplanade um, Hotel, um, the graduation. They had their breakfast um, there. And I remember being asked to... Um, uh, actually say the thank yous to everybody and that was lovely because I was able to reflect back over the three years and all those people were involved and and to wish that those foundation students plus the students that had now joined them mm. and were the first of the graduating year 12s of Great Southern mm. Grammar um, all the very best on their on their adventure and of course um, I suppose that's where too um, my um, continuation of involvement in the school has been, because to me education is absolutely so important for young people. Um, it's so important that we offer them every chance of education for their future, for their future, for their future, for our future, and for the world's future, really. Um, and uh, of course. It's rather special because Arthur, before we sadly lost Arthur in 2000 and his total involvement in the school, he um, made the beautiful lectern, which is still a part of um, all important occasions. So I, every time I see that, I always feel that he's still there, which is very special. Um, he also made uh, the big shield, which um, Stuart um, actually made us the sports shield for the uh, winning uh, sports house for the year. So, um, and because Arthur at the time when he passed away was president of the PNF, the PNF um, actually um, kindly uh, put forward the Arthur Malakari Prize for a year 12 student each year. So I, it's always kept me 
joined to the school to, and I have enjoyed seeing it grow and being involved in it and seeing the students um, from, you know, um, primary school through to graduating year 12s. It's been a delight to see and I've seen quite a few young people go through over that time and going out into the world and yes, I think we need to be very proud of that here in Albany we've got such a special school to offer for our young people um, and give them um, a great opportunity for the future. Interestingly, um, I came to know about Great Southern Grammar before it existed as such. Um, decided to enrol in the preschool academic run by Sue Main. So we used to go to this once a week or whatever and the, you know, there was a, a parent on duty each time to yeah. make, do whatever. And in that break time, I was just talking to her, and I, we both still remember this so clearly, it was where she ran her classes was at what was then the Claremont Mental Hospital. We were sitting on a hill looking out, and I had been at home for eight years or whatever, looking being a mum, raising yeah. children, and I said, if I ever got back into education, I'd really like to get into something new and innovative, because I taught him at Perth College, in oh, Perth, yeah, which was yeah. very traditional and very successful mm. and fabulous, and I had a fabulous job, which I loved. I thought I'd like to you know, get into something where you could put some of your experience into establishing something new. And she said to me, oh, you should talk to a fellow called Stephen Lee. He's trying to start up a school in Albany. I made contact with Stephen Lee and mm. just said, look, this is who I am, send my resume. And we live in Perth, but we're just looking at moving to Albany or down on the south coast. Yeah. And, um, so I wrote, and, and he said, yes, yes, well, we're not ready to employ people yet. Send me a letter later or whatever. And um, then the school did start down here. We weren't in a position to move in. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I got a job. <laughs> when I started, um, everybody was very general and mm. I could only be offered two days a week. So I was just a middle school teacher. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Stephen was writing to the middle schooling model and had this big book that everyone had to read and this is what we're going to do yeah. type of thing. Um, so I taught... I'd been phys ed and outdoor ed in yep. my background, but I really done that I thought mm. that was exhausting mm, in yeah. the private school system <laughs> <laughs> I established an outdoor ed program at Perth College which you know meant being away seven, basically 72 nights a year on campus yeah, so, so I've right. done all that yep. loved it and really saw the benefit of it so the first year at grammar school I didn't put up my hand to do his evidence book no kept that quiet. Um, and actually even in the interview Stephen said yeah well you said you'll do this that and the other but that's not your background why aren't you offering to do <laughs> so I told him Anyway, so I started off my first year doing, um, I was offered to be either the Year 8 English teacher or the Year 10 art teacher. <laughs> Hated English and not an artist. Not teacher. So I thought, well, who would suffer the most from my incompetence? <laughs> so I decided I wouldn't do Year 10 art, so I did Year 8 English, <laughs> which was great. And I really, yeah. I learned a lot. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm um, sure the kids did as and well. The, and the class was just fantastic. It was, it was 2000 and the students were all... A group of kids who'd come from Denmark, and they were just top-notch yeah, kids. Yeah. And so they made it easy as well. And of course, there were some kids in there who weren't all superly strong academically mm, as well. Mm. Um, so I taught English. Um, he decided that I would be responsible for overseeing what was called technology and enterprise. Oh yeah. Um, so that was. Um, so I had a year nine technology and enterprise. I seemed to teach health, and. Um, Everyone was involved in sport and physique because that was just once a week type of thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I think that was that made up two and a half days a week. So there was a real um, a real need to develop a, a school identity. Mm -hmm. And none of them had come from schools or backgrounds, like other private schools. Yeah, so they didn't have that, yes. There was no tradition of this is how we do it or this is how it's done. So it was, And neither did their parents. So yeah. it was a real challenge to... Um, Develop that within the student body, and and there were only a few staff, staff. Okay, and the staff, staff. too. Well, that this that was because of my private school education background, mm. you know, or my own schooling, but working in private in. schools, um, that that's just such a powerful thing. So sport, mm. I thought, well, this is a way we can put people in teams together and do things and play together and rah rah together. Yeah, yeah. But it was a real challenge um, because a lot of the kids. Um, had been wrenched out of their other schools and their social groups to come to a school that wasn't even a proper school when it was away. And why would you go there? And why you think you're different? And so dealing with them like that. So trying to help them overcome that. So it just took a huge amount of um, 
personal energy to constantly be yeah reinforcing or trying to instill this idea yeah, yeah yeah so that was that was my experience and so developing sporting team and sporting groups so this was to do the sport outside of school as well uh, or was this yeah this and was, well, it was, was by physics. sport in well, yeah well, physics yeah. is part of the curriculum yes. so that was that was one thing but no it was developing those that community yeah, interaction, interaction developing the school identity in the community mm. Um, and it was a battle. There was a mm. lot of opposition. Almost any, I think probably all the sporting bodies within the community and sporting associations we tried to enter as the school, school. representing the school weren't was, interested. Hadn't been heard of, couldn't do that. Yeah. Not all of them. Um, some of them were very um, negative about the school doing that. And for the kids, it was really hard to get them to value playing for their school rather mm. than their locality or the clubs they mm, played for mm, before. So mm. that was tricky and that was success. You know, we succeeded because there were, you know, significant parents who had perhaps had that experience somewhere else and got in behind it and made it happen. And there were also significant community individuals as well who had thought, oh, yeah, when I went to school, you know, I, I did that. Yeah, so they could remember. Yeah, mm. and so they did help. Mm. Um, so that was a challenge and, I mean, one... I remember particularly was year nine, I can't remember what it was, we were about year nine age boys, soccer team, the first time we got a boys soccer team, and they all played in, within the, the clubs in, in the town or in the association. And I remember saying to him, what, 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 I, what would I have to do? How would we, could we get you to play for grammar? Oh, we're not playing for grammar, we play for blah, blah, blah. Yeah, whoever. And I said, what would make you play for grammar? And they said, if we had shiny shirts, we would. And that's when we invented, yeah. or I invented with Stephen Lee, the um, red and blue striped shirt. Yeah. And for a while, on Saturday, you could drive down North Road and you'd just see blue and red striped mm. shirts everywhere. So I think sport did a lot in those early days okay. to create um, a sense of school and school community for the kids mm. and for the parents. And I think within the community, it was mm. how the school had a presence. Present. My, my employment at Great Southern Grammar was um, probably one of the, the most satisfying projects of my life. Mm. We needed a education for our two younger children and we had them booked in at Perth all over the place but we see the need sort of great advantage of having a local school, uh, especially a boarding school, to serve people down this way. So we, we uh, heard there was, a, there was a move on for a new school so we went try to find out and, and I was involved in some so of the meetings uh, to get the school going. Well I'd been used to being involved in schools, uh, kindergarten schools for years and years, different capacity in uh, Mount Barker area, and uh, uh, the, uh, the PNCs we call them, and, uh, and I, I was very interested in education and i had been uh, holding various office jobs, official uh, jobs in the P PNCs. And so I, I knew a fair bit about all this sort of thing, so I, um, I um, um, thought I would get straight into the PNF as soon as I can. And when our children started, uh, our first child started in 99, um, I, was, uh, I, I was end up being on, on the committee of the PNF. Later on, I, I ended up being uh, a couple of years as, as president. president. That's, that's right. And I've been interested ever since. And can you tell me now, today, how you're still involved with the school? <laughs> well, now I, I, I love to see it going as it goes and improving and hearing good, good reports from parents. Uh, and um, and we just, with the grandchildren there, and we love going back to school. We're always, we're always enjoying going back to school. Some, some place we always found very pleasant and very enjoyable. We used to love coming to the school with the sundowners early. It was like going home. We couldn't put our name to every parent at the sundowners early days, but we certainly knew them all by face until it became a K to 12 when the numbers got too big that we lost control. Uh, it is like coming home. We've made lots of lovely friends there. Um, the children did well there. They were happy there. And um, of course, when the grandchildren came along, we certainly encouraged them to, to go there as well. And they are very, very happy and doing exceptionally well there as well. So we have a lot to be thankful for, for our involvement. It is part of our life now. And um, 
Yes, so I think we still love going back and feel it's part of our, our time and we do get, don't get involved as much as we'd like to because we still do live at the farm groups. But we love the people and we love everything about it. It's not perfect, I say to people, the school's not perfect, but nor are we. Having been a parent at Grammar for the last 10 years, I've been heavily involved with the uh, community at the school and from the first day um, I came in for an interview for my son Jim into pre-primary, I just felt a strong sense of belonging and care. Um, and then over the years I've been the president of the PNF and the community's always been very strong and supportive of everything that the school represents. Organising major events was always easy because everyone would volunteer and get involved. Um, we had some big shoes to fill across the years of the PNF. Um, but always that sense of coming together and belonging and that you know, we look out for each other. Communication has always been a big part of the school um, and its success. Our access and um, ability to communicate with the staff as a, as a parent body has always been a really positive thing um, to be able to achieve and all be on the same page as to the direction the school is going. It's a very, um, very strong connected school. So I remember the first day I arrived um, I came into the building uh, and having come from England where it was sort of quite well resourced I walked into the building which is now the East, the, now the junior school uh, and there was nothing, nothing here at all, there were no tables, no chairs, no resources, nothing and I thought oh gosh you know, no paper, no pencils. Um, so it was like, what am I going to do? I've only got suit two suitcases and um, how am I going to get all these things? And then it was almost like um, magic. All these people sort of arrived and everybody was, um, you know, what do you need and what would you like help with? Um, so to start with, well, the first two weeks of school, we only had, we had no desks and no chairs. We did a lot of sitting on the floor, lots of blankets and <laughs> lots of rugs and things um, and buying pencils and paper and everything we could in Albany. Um, but we had lots of um, lots of busy bees where the parents and, and, and staff would come together at the weekends and we'd just sew things and make things and I had these beautiful cushions made for me and um, people were just wonderful giving uh, and, and just making it a beautiful school and a beautiful place to be. Uh, and I think that's uh, that's something that's really dear to me from the beginning, those, those beginning days. It was really... Um, a real sense of community and, and a sense of it wasn't just a job uh, it was it was our life and we were all working together not just sort of parents and, and staff but um, all the EAs um, anybody in the local community anyone who had an interest in, in sort of making this venture work everyone just chipped in um, it was quite social it was um, it was just for the love of the children and for getting this venture up and this exciting um, school happening in, in Albany. So in 2002 um, uh, I arrived and there was, as I say, nothing here. Uh, we had three classes. We had um, a, a double class for pre-primary and kindy and there were three students at that stage to start with. Uh, we had years one, two, three which were my classes and I had 13 students, um, uh, all beautiful, beautiful kids. Uh, and then we had a year four, five and six class as well and that was the whole junior school and there were about, I think there were about 40 children. Um, and the beautiful thing was that we had a um, uh, Friday afternoon where we'd all work together and we'd do lots of projects with kindy up to year six or mixing in our different house groups um, and all coming together to, we, we made some um, pavers, uh, some mosaic pavers for the playground. Um, we did some um, Aboriginal dot paintings uh, in, in my group, I remember, I've still got those pictures. Uh, and it was, it was just so much um, fun and it was just so lovely, that, that sense of family. We were such a sense of family in those early days. Mm -hmm. It was a real leap of faith, sounds a bit of a cliche, but it really was people believing in this venture and the sense of community, the sense of family, the sense of it didn't matter who you were, um, didn't matter how old your children were, if you didn't have children, um, if you were a teacher, an EA, gardener, <laughs> um, everybody, parents just all working together 
to make this um to make this happen to make it happen and that sense of family and sense of community is just is so strong it's just such a um it was such a powerful powerful thing people were working all hours of the day and night and um bringing i remember one day people bringing pizzas in because we were still working and still trying to get things sorted out for the start of the new year and um many many sundays people coming in almost every sunday to to either all help with the playground to lay pavers grass um in fact when i when i first arrived um coming from london very different environment having this beautiful landscape and um wonderful sort of foreshore and um i stood out in the playground which was actually just um bare grass there was nothing i was saying nothing there was no playground equipment there was nothing there at all and i thought gosh how are we going to make a school out of this um and then i saw a, a kangaroo hop across the lawn and i thought or the paddock and i thought oh my goodness this is australia and <laughs> this is very different from what i'm used to um and, and we're going to we're going to make this into a school and we've got kangaroos you know hopping across the the grass and um but it it, it has worked it's been amazing I mean, it's amazing mm. to see the growth and mm. to see how we're now we're now a proper school. <laughs> Good friends of uh, Marcy and mine, the Prattons, uh, Peter and Elizabeth Pratton, um, told us about the what was just an idea then of um, establishing a non-denominational uh, co-educational Christian grammar school in Albany to give. The people of the Great Southern, the families of the Great Southern, who wanted private education for their children, to have a choice between sending the children to Perth, or um, going to school in Albany, even if it meant boarding, but just mm. closer. Um, now, the the closest connection I had with the Great Southern myself was that when I first came to Australia in my early twenties, I worked on a couple of farms uh, in Katanning and then in. Um, near no anger up uh, but my wife Marcia her her father and mother and I think going back another two generations had farmed in the Kojanup Cranbrook region oh, right okay so and, there was a close um, connection yes there was and we used to regularly go down mm. to mm. Uh, to the farm and Marcia growing up um, had the, the family had a family home um, uh, down near the the sea, uh, and so she was a regular holiday uh, girl at Albany. Anyway, I, I was quite taken with the idea of because of the, the family connection and and the idea of it, and I'd been involved in with Marcy with establishing a Christian primary school um, in Mundaring, which is still there and now it's grown. It now includes a high school, so I had the interest in the region in the. The fact that it was a, to be a Christian school and um, and in education, so they were looking to f form a team. That was Stephen Lee, who I think had the original vision, who became the founding headmaster. So he, uh, um, Peter Pratt, and myself, and then I think probably four others. So I remember Annette Knight, who was a wonderful lady, former, um, as you know, mayor of mm. Albany. I, I think. John Cochran, um, but I'm not sure whether he was there at the beginning. So we, uh, they agreed to, to have me on board, and we, as a group of seven, met in this very small room, not much bigger than the room you and I are sitting in just now, in an office in um, owned by Anglicare in West Perth, and um, we sat there and and uh, we prayed. And we asked, we asked God to. For it was was this from Him? Was did we have His approval? And and would He help us? So that's how it started for me. Mm. It's amazing, isn't it? It is. It's uh, as I look back on it, you know, the Bible talks about um, don't despise the days of small beginnings. Mm. It was a very small beginning mm. when you see the school now and what it is and what it represents. And then that process of going forward, how how were you involved in the of the actual um, founding of the school and the locations of the site and 
Um, well, we were all involved, involved, and we would meet regularly, and we'd meet in Perth, and because uh, there was myself and Peter from Perth, everyone else was from Albany or near Albany, um, and each of us brought different skills to mm. the table. But in the early years, I mean, it wasn't, uh, you know, it, it wasn't dramatic because we had no money, mm. uh, we had no land, of course we had no students or teachers, we just had a vision. But we were all thrilled by the vision, and so we just went around doing what what you do when you're seeking to to bring the vision to life, mm. which is talking to local people, local families, whether they thought it was a good idea, whether they would support it, whether they'd send their children to the school. We looked at um, various sites. I remember going around with the others. I remember one particular site. I'm sorry, my geography of Albany is not very good, but. Um, I remember it being rather swampy, <laughs> and maybe perhaps it was in winter, but it was very sodden. And I thought, no, this is not this is not going to be good. <laughs> but but we we ended up not finding any land to begin with. Uh, but we but we had gone through the the tedious but necessary processes of dealing with the state and federal governments in order to get um, capital grants mm. um, uh, for the, to just start um, and you know that's easier said than done because I, if I knew it before I certainly knew it during the process of building the school and that is that there are different kinds of people when it comes to a vision mm. there are those who have the vision can see the vision are not deterred by the fact that it's only a vision then there are those who um, can kind of see the vision, but come back and talk to me when you've got some land, sort of people. And then there's the people who wait until it's launched and there's at least 50 or 60 students there, and then we'll have a look at yes. putting our children in. But I remember fondly, for example, Marcia's father, he he gave us some money towards mm. the venture, and, and other people did. I mean, I think it... I think it uh, it's easy to say this in hindsight, but my recollection is that it um, it seized the imagination of, of quite a number of, of people in the Great South, mm. particularly in, in the farming community. And and speaking of that, Stephen, I wasn't able to generally, but Stephen and mainly, but others would, would attend agricultural shows just to get around and, and talk tell to people, people and tell it. people about it and just to garner interest. Uh, so it was a a slow process um, I mean we all we, none of us were working full time on this not mm. even Stephen mm. Lee um, and we had to you know, also talk to the bank in relation to private funding um, but as you know it's, well, the, there was no land to begin with we, we rented I? premises okay. I remember going on this tour and you know, it was land and it was fairly close to Albany but I think it's a bit like when you're looking for a house, you know, you, you there can be a dozen houses you look at, mm. but there's the one that's got the wow right. factor, yeah. that you just go, this is it. Mm. And ultimately, when um, the present, or well, the only campus that school's ever had, when that became available, mm. it was definitely a wow yeah. factor. Mm. So we got through all that process and and we started, I think, with just under 40 students. Churches can be temperamental, or at least some leadership in some churches can be temperamental, even possessive. Mm. Uh, and I say that in a kindly way. Um, people think they know better. And I, I know, looking at the non-denominational aspect, we, we want it to be Christian, we want it to be a school that believed God's word is ex revealed in the Bible. So in that sense, it was orthodox Christianity, not some strange take on the Bible. Absolutely orthodox Christianity. But uh, I think, well, perhaps I should just speak for myself, but I think there was a general agreement about this, that uh, I had seen, because my own children went to, uh, church schools so described mm -hmm. 
but I never, as a Christian, I never find any of them that really took the view that Christianity and the Christian faith should imbue the entirety mm. of the life of the school and in, in relation to one school at least really they paid lip service to their Christian heritage and but each of them um, came under the banner of one or other established denominations yeah. and I mean, you know, there's some people who, you know, they'll say, you're a Christian, they'll say, no, I'm an Anglican. Well, mm. you know, what does that mean? It just means that you've chosen to go to a particular type of church. Some people are Pentecostal, some are charismatic, some are Catholic. Um, so we, we didn't want to be branded, if you like, mm. other than as a Christian school. And so we didn't want to feel that people had to... Um, mull or agonise over whether as Anglicans they would send their children, children to yeah. a non-Anglican school or, or vice versa mm. uh, and we we did actually have um, serious attempts made by I won't mention names no. or churches to to kind of take control of the project mm. to bring it under their banner, banner. and we um, politely resisted that and it, but it was at a stage when you might think that we and we probably were financially vulnerable so there was the temptation of accepting financial assistance mm. but the trade-off was was too high a price for us to pay because that's not what we wanted we didn't mm. want it to be controlled from some church hierarchical office in Perth mm. we wanted this to be um, a local Christian school with local leadership that was very important to us and, and I and I as I sit here I'm glad that we oh I think it mm. stuck to our guns as mm. it were as soon as she put in a church banner mm. against an organization people jumped to all sorts of conclusions as to where you stand on a whole range of subjects mm. which may mm. um, in part be correct but often it's not correct mm. I mean, there are Anglican churches and Anglican churches, for example. Mm. And, you know, people talk about liberal churches. and or, So so I'm glad we firstly made that decision and secondly that we stuck to it. Mm. Uh, well, let me emphasise that mine was um, simply a part and not, I don't think, as large a part as others played. Uh, but my heart uh, for the school when it was just a vision and when it was born and when it grew to be almost a teenager mm. and now that it's entering into its 20s has remained um, uh, resolutely founded on one thing and that is I, I never wanted the school to lose its um, Christian heritage never wanted the school to become like some of the schools I've described and experienced I wanted to, because real Christianity with people who really believe and who really trust God is a very vibrant life. And you see the vibrancy of that um, in the creativity and the generation of the school spirit and in all of its um, aspects. So as I look back on the school, um, I'm very thankful to many people who um, have gone along with me on that. Uh, there have been times when some people have thought that it was an extreme view and and I have said gently but firmly to those people look this is a Christian school we're not apologizing for that mm. um, that's people send their children here knowing it's a Christian school and we profess the Christian faith not just in chapel but throughout the life of the school mm. and that's who we are and um, there's always a temptation to allow pragmatism so-called or financial issues to to begin to encroach on questions of faith but I I always wanted it to remain a faith-based school and that was very um, important in our uh, choice of um, head uh, masters over the period um, 
I, I think it's probably one of the um, most thrilling things that I've been involved in. I've been involved in a number of organisations from the ground up, but I'd, I'd say this would be close to the top. It might be first equal, I think. Mm. And I, I love it. I love it when I come to the school and, you know, I walk through the grounds. Because obviously you see the beautiful grounds and how they've been developed and new buildings and trees growing, the farm and the little vineyard and the cattle. But I actually love to see to watch the the students. The students, yeah. And I, I, as I said to you earlier before we started recording this, knowing that that, well, firstly, most of them, or well, there are a few who know me because they've come up when I was a judge, and uh, to the court, and we had, had times together mm. discussing um, the the role of the federal court and other courts in the country. But for the most part, I'm just an adult. An, an older adult walking through the grounds and they've got no idea who I am but, but I know who they are mm. and it's such a it's quite heartwarming for me mm. to see that and, and to see the uh, the way that the students really ha- embrace the life of the school and uh, whenever I've gone to functions there they're just you know you can tell that they're proud to be students at Great Southern Grammar and that's a wonderful thing. My mother-in-law stay at Heather Markari. She was doing um, accommodation, and then my ma- my mother-in-law left her umbrella there, and and went back there, and she just happened to have conversation about me back then. I was teaching at Norangarap and Borden district high school and um, I, my elder daughter was only two um, it was, and it was a bit hard to uh, work over there but so and Heda told my mother-in-law that there's a new school starting if maybe our mom might be interested and they want to teach Japanese. We didn't have a timetable, we changed tab- timetable every week Okay. and we didn't have anything. I was allowed to buy a set of textbooks, but I can remember a lot of other teachers, they really didn't have any resources. I was lucky to be able to be involved in uh, a school from first year mm. and sort of grow with the school. Grand, mm. and grandma. I feel like this school is like my kind of child really mm. Um, mm. through all different headmasters or principals I think they all brought something that they needed at the time okay. at the grammar school I think um, students are really nice mm. students makes a difference really mm. um, so I'm, I'm really ha- happy like working here yeah